thank you for the invite to your class. My name is Nancy Time Murray. I'm a professor of communication disorders at Washington University School of Medicine, and I'm also the CEO of CLEAR, Customized Learning Exercises for Oral Rehabilitation. And today I'll be presenting with my colleague at CLEAR, Jackie Napoli, who's the Director of Professional Services at CLEAR. And I'll start by presenting you the philosophy of customized hearing health care and the background behind CLEAR. And then Jackie will give you some nuts and bolts about how to use it. Uh, so CLEAR uh, is a company that provides customized hearing health care to patients with hearing loss. It was founded in uh, November of 2015, and it's based on about 10 years of NIH-sponsored research. Before I tell you about the uh, actual program, I want to talk about our philosophy of hearing health care. And this philosophy guided the development of CLEAR. There are four components of customized hearing health care, and I'll go by through them one by one. But uh, just to list them, first of all, addressing the patient's predicament. Number two, creating a community for patients. Three, joining the patient journey. And four, involving the frequent communication partner. Um, this is a philosophy that, that most people, when they see it, go, yeah, yeah, this looks great. This is what hearing health care should be. But many times, we just focus on that top bubble, addressing the patient's predicament, which means uh, pr providing good diagnostics, making recommendations about hearing devices, and making sure they're fitted. And a lot of times, I sometimes call it a Christmas tree, where one branch has all the ornaments, and we ignore the other branches. So one of the guiding principles behind Designing Clear was, let's make sure that we in, uh, incorporate all four of these very important components. Uh, so that top bubble, as I said, was understanding and addressing the patient predicament. And this is uh, addressing the predicament entails not only performing diagnostics and uh, providing those appropriately fitting hearing aids, but very importantly, it also entails addressing those communication situations in which a patient would like to experience more success. And so, you know, patients come with different complaints. You might have one uh, patient who says, I have a hard time listening in background noise. Another one says, I want my everyday conversations with my spouse or my adult child to be less effortful and more successful. Uh, somebody else might say, I really have problems with children's voices, and I'm worried because my grandchildren are coming in from California, and I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to understand what they're going to say, what they're saying. So finding out not only uh, the degree to which a patient has hearing loss and addressing that hearing challenge problem, but also why is it you're here? What are your communication difficulties, and how can we best address those? Involving the frequent communication partner. So research has shown that when family members and other communication partners are involved in the hearing health care plan, uh, patients are much more likely to purchase hearing aids, much more likely to use them on a regular basis, and much more likely to be satisfied with their hearing treatment plan. And in my experience, you know, uh, the frequent communication partner, we call them FCPs, often are anxious to play a role in the hearing health care plan. You know, think about it, conversation's a two-way street, uh, a dance back and forth between two people. And um, the partner wants to learn how to be as helpful as possible in ensuring successful conversations and also to play a role in the, in the part. Uh, so we've created a way to involve the um, FCP. Uh, the third important component is creating a community. And uh, we as hearing professionals probably understand better than any other professional group out there the devastating consequences that hearing loss can have on someone. 
Um, not only do they lead, does hearing loss lead to conversational difficulties, but it can lead to social isolation, uh, family and friend difficulties, lowered self-esteem, lowered self-confidence, early retirement, and even cognitive decline. Uh, it, it can affect someone's self-identity and emotional well-being. So um, research has shown, and in my personal experience in the industry, that one of the most effective antidotes to um, counteract these negative consequences is creating a community with other people who have hearing loss. And uh, that aha moment when a patient realizes that I'm not the only person experiencing these difficulties and connecting with people who you can empathize with and share solutions with. Very important part and something that uh, we don't do probably as often as we should in our hearing health care community, in part because we don't have the tools to do it or the time to do it. Uh, in part, some of us feel uncomfortable creating communities. Uh, finally, joining the patient journey. And, you know, you say, well, I'm, I'm going to be in a busy practice. It's, Sounds great, but but I'm going to be expected to see lots of patients, and this is true. But I had a real eye-opening experience during a, a research project not long ago. Um, we gave auditory training to a group of 93 patients over the course of eight weeks, and they had a very limited contact with us. Basically, they would come in, an audiologist would say, "Hey, Mr. Jones." Glad to see you. I've got your auditory training all set up in the booth. Let's show you in. At the end, they'd say, great, Mr. Jones. You did well. I'll see you next Tuesday, and um, you're, you're getting there. So about five minutes of contact in an hour period. At the end of it, we said, we gave them questionnaires, and we said, what do you like best about what you just went through? And they said, uh, three answers tied for number one. Uh, the games, the, our, our clear auditory training games, brain training games were fun to play. Fair enough. That's the good news. Uh, number two, I feel empowered over my hearing loss that I'm actually taking proactive action to deal with it. It's great. And number three tied right up there was regular contact with my hearing health care professional. So patients want uh, encouragement, coaching, and um, the idea that somebody cares what I'm doing. And so uh, I, I doubt anybody out there would disagree with that, but the question is, how do we make this clinically and economically feasible for a hearing health care professional to pull off? So all these, uh, these four guiding principles, this philosophy of customized hearing health care, was very much the impetus for the development of CLEAR. Uh, CLEAR is, at the centerpiece, is computerized game-based auditory brain training. So that is the centerpiece. It was designed with uh, patient-specific communication goals in mind. And as I'll show you in a little bit more detail, uh, in general, these games tra train on sound discrimination and then um, uh, cognitive skills that underlie listening, such as auditory processing speed and auditory working memory. So why do you need the, this kind of training? Well, auditory brain training will not technically improve your hearing, so the objective uh, test results of hearing. But it can help patients to improve the way they maximally use their residual hearing. Amplification cannot change the way our brains interpret sounds that come into it, but the brain is like any other muscle uh, that requires exercise and physical therapy, if you will, to stay healthy and even improve. And that's why our tagline is that we ear, uh, we brain train the ears, or ear train the brain is another tagline that we have. Okay, so this is probably the most complicated uh, slide I'm going to share with you today, but I want you to understand the four key elements of CLEAR and what makes CLEAR unique from any other auditory brain training program out there. Uh, first of all, the talkers. Um, let me tell you about two patients just to illustrate. I had one patient uh, named Jim. He was a lawyer. 
he came to us with depression. Uh, he, was, he had been an attorney for 37 years and had to quit because he no longer felt he could adequately serve his patients. Uh, he couldn't hear the witnesses' responses. When he uh, questioned potential juror, juror memory, members, he couldn't always hear their answers. Um, so he had to quit because he thought he wasn't serving his clients properly. And he came to us and he said, you know, I've, been, I've, I've defined myself for 37 years as a lawyer. I'm no longer a lawyer and I'm lost as to who I am. The second person I want to tell you about is my father-in-law. His name's Bob. And uh, at family gatherings, Bob was becoming more and more isolated and withdrawn. And his adult children began to think, hmm, maybe dad is suffering cognitive decline. And um, I, I watched him for a while and I realized, no, it's not cognitive decline. My father-in-law was suffering hearing loss and the isolation that comes with it. And he, he's a very proud man and was afraid of saying something that was inappropriate or didn't follow up previous remark. I share these two people because they illustrate why CLEAR can be customized for particular patients. So Jim needed to understand generic patients uh, or generic talkers, you know, male talkers, female talkers. So CLEAR allows patients to talk, train with male voices, female voices, or children voices that are stored on uh, the website. What's particularly wonderful about CLEAR is that we have a proprietary recording editing system. This means you can very easily record anybody's voice the patient wants to hear and immediately they can train with those voices. So in the case of my father-in-law, those voices would have been his wife, my husband, my sister-in-law, uh, my nieces, my nephews, my children. So you can teach patients to recognize those voices that are important for them to hear in their everyday conversation. And this is a very unique aspect of CLEAR. Uh, so it's the opportunity to train with uh, male, female, or children voices. So the next key element of uh, CLEAR are the training activities. And uh, uh, have, if you've engaged in traditional auditory training where you use the screen over your mouth and you do such a, kinds of activities as that we used to do, like ma ma, are those the same or different? Ba ta, are those the same or different? Uh, you quickly begin to see your patient's eyes glaze over and realize that you're boring them stiff. One of the key um, principles of teaching and of learning is that you've got to engage people in a way that is uh, that makes them pay attention, makes them enjoy the learning process. So we made our auditory brain training activities fun. Uh, we use principles of computer game design, uh, lots of good graphics, and our goal is to have games that patients would like to play even if they weren't good for them. And we, I'll show you in a few minutes or in a couple slides that we've been successful on this. We've had outstanding compliance. So patients who have signed up for the clear auditory brain training tend to complete it. And finally, we have proven results. Um, I know it's very important for audiologists to have evidence-based practice. So we have extensively researched and published and uh, fine-tuned our training activities. So what exactly are we training? Uh, the training is very principled. Uh, first of all, we train common words of the language. And you probably learned in one of your classes that uh, there's something called most frequent words of the language concept. And basically, during everyday conversations, we use the same words over and over again. Words like table and chair and box and telephone. Uh, so one thing that we train with the clear auditory brain training activities are the most common words of the English language. So when they occur during everyday conversations, patients are more likely to recognize them. Uh, secondly, we, we train fine phonetic or phonemic distinction, so pa, ba, ta kinds of things, rhyming words. 
Importantly, we train those cognitive skills that are necessary for listening regardless of what it is you're listening to. Uh, three cognitive skills, auditory working memory, audit, uh, so you remember the beginning of a sentence by the time you come to the end of it, for example. Auditory processing speed, words come at you very quickly, about 100 words, 120 words per minute. So you've got to be able to process them very quickly in ongoing speech. And then auditory attention. And this is the ability to draw out your target speech sample when there's background noise present in the environment. Finally, and very importantly, the audiologist. So we only offer clear through hearing healthcare professionals. If a direct user comes to the site, they're able to sign up, but we immediately assign them to an audiologist. And hence it becomes a win-win situation. Uh, patients get an audiologist to oversee them, and audiologists get a new patient. Uh, we also encourage audiologists to enroll patients. We give a wholesale price to audiologists, and then we have a suggested retail price. So uh, first of all, the audio, we have lesson plans. This isn't on this graph here, but we ha the audiologist selects a lesson plan that's appropriate for the patient. And this is where that concept of customized learning comes back in. For example, we have a lesson plan for the new hearing aid user. We have the lesson plan for the patient who's not quite ready for hearing aids yet, uh, but he wants, he or she wants some kind of intervention. We have a lesson plan for somebody who wants training with a uh, frequent communication partner. We have a lesson plan for the cochlear implant user. Uh, we have the lesson plan for the patient who complains of hearing in noise or who, and another one for the patient who complains of not being able to understand male, uh, female and children's voices. So the audiologist has tools to customize the training program. And then we have a uh, very easy to use messaging system that's built into the CLEAR website where they can look at the uh, feedback charts of patients' performance and quickly send messages like, I see you trained today, you did really well on this game, good for you. And patients love that ongoing um, support and it only takes like 30 seconds twice a week to send a message to your patients. Uh, we also have a chat room in what we call a treasure chat within each clinic. So you can create communities with your patients through the chat room. And then as you play the games, you earn coins. These are played into a communal treasure chest. And eventually, you can use these coins to do something good in your community. Relevant research findings. So as um, I mentioned just a, a few minutes ago, I think it's very important that we give the uh, evidence to audiologists to show that the training is effective so they can um, uh, follow ASHA's and AAA's recommendation of providing evidence-based practice procedures. Uh, so we have published in the premier journals in our field. We showed that word discrimination improves after training. Um, it reduces perceptual effort. And as you probably know, perceptual effort is just as the name implies how much effort it takes to uh, stay engaged in a conversation. You know, very often you'll say, oh, I'm like, hear a patient say, oh, I'm exhausted from listening. I kind of heard it, but I'm exhausted. And so tra this kind of training reduces perceptual effort. Um, and then two important findings I want to give you a little more detail. With. Compliance rate is 95%. So of the 93 patients I just told you about uh, that we gave the questionnaires, 95% of them completed the entire training program. Uh, our closest competitor, LACE, is at less than 30% compliance rate. And I think the difference is, is number one, we went the strategy of using gamification, we made it enjoyable for them to play. And number two, that involvement of the audiologist who, uh, you know, you can't send a patient home and say, train willy nilly, you know, and then come back in three months and we'll see how you're doing. They, they just won't do it. They need that lesson plan I mentioned, and then they need just a regular, um, 
indication from an audiologist that somebody's paying attention, somebody cares that I'm doing it, somebody's giving me feedback. And the other one I want to point out is this bottom one. Um, we showed that if you train with the speech of your spouse, an FCP, uh, we will enhance your ability to um, discriminate speech and reduce communication difficulties as indexed by the COSI. And this, this was an amazing study. It, we performed it with patients who had been married an average of 14 years, and they still showed significant improvement. Um, and then just uh, one last study here that I'll, I'll cover is we used, um, this goes back to what did you like best about the training, and I just want to reiterate that involvement of the audiologist was a key factor to it. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jackie Napoli, who is CLEAR's Director of Professional Services. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about CLEAR. Um, one thing that we have is uh, customized lesson plans for eight different types of patients. So one size does not fit all. Um, we want to make this very simple and easy for you to use with your patients. So we have developed these lesson plans, which I will show you once we walk into the website. But this is going to um, give you an exact uh, guide for what your patients will be doing when they get home. So these are the different lesson plans that we have. New hearing aid user, patient who complains of listening and noise, patient who has difficulty hearing voices of women and children, um, person who comes in not ready for hearing aids but needs hearing health care. And then we also have the ability to record the voice of what we call a frequent communication partner. So we have two plans for that. And then the patient with CAPD and cognitive challenges as well as the patient with a new cochlear implant. All of these patients have different needs and that is what we are um, addressing with these lesson plans. There also are different talker options. So you can choose men's voices, women's voices, children's. Like I said, frequent communication partner, we can have up to five people in their life record uh, that it might be a teacher, might be a spouse, might be a grandchild, can record to be used for training. We also have a British male voice and an Australian female voice. We also have some feedback charts within the website. I will go into more detail about these once we look into the website, but for reference, this just gives you an idea of how your patients are doing, how they're performing, um, and if they're improving. There's also um, resources available to use for clear outcome measures. So you can do pre and post testing with audio word and sentence tests and quiet and noise. We have a communication training readiness form. So that's going to help you determine the motivation. So not every patient is a candidate for, for clear. Um, we want to make sure they're very motivated um, to help themselves, and so that's what that form is for. We also have some subjective questionnaires that can kind of help you with determining subjective improvement. The messaging system, um, again, I'm going to show you in detail when I open the website, but the messaging system is one of the most important aspects of CLEAR. So what in our research, what we determined was that patients most one of the most important aspects of the program for them was the communication with their audiologist. So we designed this semi-automated messaging system to make it very easy for you to communicate with your patients. You know, you might just send them um, a message of, of encouragement. Um, hey, looks like you played the games. Great job. Or you can send them maybe the lesson plan that they're going to be working on for that week. So um, just it should not take a lot of your time. We anticipate that this is maybe something that you spend five minutes a week doing, but it's an invaluable part of the program for keeping patients compliant and, and not giving them the extra nudge to hop on and, and start playing the games again if they haven't, for example. There's also a community tre treasure chest and bulletin board. So this is uh, where you can, as when you become a clinician, that you can really kind of customize this to your own office. So you can choose a community target goal of coins. 
And then maybe there's an incentive for your patients. Once the coin goal is met, we're going to do a wine and cheese party. Or once the you know goal is met, everybody's going to get a free pack of batteries. The other part about the community treasure chest and bulletin board is that um, you can see that other people are playing the game. So it's motivating to see that you're not just out there doing this on your own. There are other people on the same journey as you with hearing loss. So this is my information. You're, uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you might have. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just head out to the website so that we can kind of walk through exactly how this would work with a patient. So what I'm going to do is log in as on our training page here. So there are three ways that you can participate in the program. One is as an HHP, which is a hearing health care provider. That's what you'll be. Two is as a subscriber. That's what your patients are. And three as an F FCP, which is a frequent communication partner who might be recording their voice for, um, for somebody else to train with. So this page that I've logged into is the HHP page. So when you look at this page, you'll see this is your dashboard. This is your landing site. So this is uh, everything that you're going to need for communication with your patients will show up right here. So the first thing that I want to direct you to is down here on the left, the resources for my office. This is where you're going to find all of those unique lesson plans that I was just talking about. So I just want to show you what one of those might look like. So I've chosen the lesson plan for the patient with a new hearing aid. It's broken down into 12 weeks, so you've got a summary of the plan, and then week by week, exactly what your patients are going to be doing and why. So we recommend that they're going to play the games 20 to 30 minutes, two to four times per week. And um, then over here in the, in the tips section, it's going to show you why they're playing. So a reason why somebody with a new hearing aid might be playing the game would be different from somebody who maybe has auditory processing disorder, et cetera. So that's just something that gives you some meaningful use if they ask you, you know, what is Pearl Crunch doing for me? It's very easy for you to check right here and say, you know, uh, this is why you're playing this game. Um, but I'm just going to head back to the dashboard and walk you through this. So you've chosen a lesson plan for your patients. You've got a patient enrolled. So this is that messaging system that I was talking about. Um, and we've, like I said, we've made it very easily easy. So for example, when I'm working with a patient, I can go into the canned messages, head down to the weekly lesson plans, and I can choose, let's say my patient is on the listening and noise lesson plan. I can simply select this message and send it off to them. That took me five seconds, and now they know what they're supposed to do for the week, and they know that I'm paying attention to them. So it's very um, important for them to see, okay, somebody's keeping up with what I'm up to. Um, so, so that's all there is to the messaging system. And again, like I said, you might just send words of encouragement. You're definitely improving in the games. You've been playing a lot more. That's great. Keep it up. Um, uh, that's all it takes to be motivating to your patients. Um, to continue on with the program. So I'm going to head back to the dashboard. The next section is the patient's info. So I'm going to choose that. Here's where you've got the progress report. So you can see what games they've been playing, how long they've been playing. Um, so, you know, if, for example, you signed on on July 9th and you saw, okay, you haven't played in quite a few days, that might give you an idea of something to say, you know, Hey, are you on vacation? Looks like you've been busy. Why don't you repeat week two and we'll pick up with week three next week to get you back on track. Or if you choose each, you know, individual game, you can sort of see exactly what they're doing within that game. So our subjective measure of improvement is going to be the noise tolerance level. Noise tolerance is similar to signal to noise ratio. However, what we tell patients is that they should play these games on their computer at the volume set where it's comfortable to them, so just like the television. So not every patient is going to have the same mixing of the signal. 
the lower the noise tolerance, the more they're improving in the game. So for example, if on June 27th the noise tolerance was at 0.5 and on July 12th the noise tolerance was at negative 0.5, you would be able to say, that's great. You are definitely improving. Your noise tolerance has decreased. Therefore, you're able to hear the same amount of words with more noise in the background. The next part is the subscribed plan. Just lets you know when their subscription is valid until. And finally, the user info is just anything they've written in their profile that they wanted you to know about them. Back to the dashboard. So if they have anybody signed up to record their voice, you will see that person here. It's just FYI for you to see what your patients have going on. If they tell you, I really want my husband to record his voice, but I can't figure out how to invite him to do that, you can do that for them right here. Click on the Invite FCPs, which stands for Frequent Communication Partner. Send them an email. Send them an invite. Once they get that invite, it will walk them through exactly what they're supposed to do. And I will also show you what that looks like here in just a little bit. Heading back to the dashboard, the next tab you'll see is the Notifications tab. So this is just corporate notifications. You've purchased subscriptions. You've um, somebody has used a subscription code that you've given them, so there's nothing that you need to do in this screen. This is just FYI for you, for you about your account. The next tab is the Requests and Invites tab. So this is, uh, if somebody comes directly to the CLEAR website, once they sign up, we suggest that they work with a hearing healthcare professional. So they might choose you to work with. You would see that right under here, and you can choose to accept or deny them. So the way that works is the patients pay the website, and then CLEAR pays the provider who works with that person. This is how you purchase subscriptions. So we don't need to go into too many details about this, because when you get out in the real world, you'll need a reminder anyway. But the way that it works is that this subscription is $75 provider cost and then we recommend that providers charge patients $150 um, so that they're making some profit as well and then down here this is where when you purchase a subscription it will show up in your subscription code bank and I'm going to show you how to access those in just a little bit finally you have the demo tab so you are all going to be getting set up with a patient page um, that you will be able to access all of the games with unlimited amount of um, game play time. And I'm going to show you what your page will look like once you log into there as well. Um, but this is going to give you an idea of, so a description of what the game is, the auditory skills trained. You've got all six games here. So you could play, play these um, if you wanted to show your patients what they looked like before they decided to sign up. Um, but those will be there, but you, you'll have better access to them on your patient page. What I want to show you now is how to enroll a patient. So when you enroll a patient, my, my suggestion would be to do this you know, right when the patient's there in the office with you. So the first thing you want to do is copy a code for them. Okay. Then you're going to select Enroll a Patient here on the left-hand side, and I'm just going to make somebody up. Um, and once you enroll them, they are now associated with you as an HHP. When you choose a username, you want to make sure that it's a non-identifying name because of that My Community aspect that I talked about before. So um, you want to make sure that they aren't going to be able to identify another patient in your community by their first name. So then what you're going to do is log out, and you'll log right back in as the patient with the email address you were just given as well as the password that they gave you. When you log in, they'll be asked for a subscription code. You paste that in and apply, and it's going to direct them straight to, you, to their training page.
So now they've got a lesson plan that they're going to work from, and they pull this up and they say, okay, I'm supposed to play Aeronaut for 10 minutes today. All they do is, here's Aeronaut, select Play Now and get started on the game. So what's most important for your patients to see is that all of the games right here that they can play. So this is the page that you're going to get access to um, so that you can play all of the games as well. They have access to their progress reports to see how they're doing, if they're improving over time. And then messages. This is where if they have a question for you, they're going to want to type that right in right there and um, send it to you. And that's how you will um, be able to communicate with them very easily. So those are the most important things. And then, of course, that My Community, which is up here on the right. This is what I was talking about. So they've got a treasure chest so they can see, okay, as a group, this is what we're working towards. They can see their community members so they can see, oh, look, other people are playing these games. They're collecting coins. So it's not just me out there. Um, so it's very motivating for people to see that there are other people um, that are participating um, in the program as well. If they wanted to invite a frequent communication partner, they could do so. So you saw how I could do that from my screen. But here they are, and they can do this from their screen. So they can, it looks exactly the same. So they would just send the email to whoever it might be that they're inviting to record their voice. And um, now what I'm going to do is show you what, what it would look like from the frequent communication, um, sorry, frequent communication partner standpoint. So the frequent communication partner gets an email and they log in and this is the screen that they see. So they can choose a word list to record. If they choose to record everything in one sitting, it'll take them about 90 minutes. But they can record list by list. As soon as one complete list is recorded, then that can be worked into the training. So um, if they only have 20 or 30 minutes to record, they can get through as much as they can, and then they can come back to it later. When they choose a list, it will give them the instructions. But the bottom line is when the, when the box turns green, you speak. Mary. So you can see the waveform showed up in the box if you want to hear it again. It was awfully quiet on my computer, but sounds good. You can accept it. Cherry. So once they get to 25, this word list would start being worked into the patient's training. So that is all three, I've shown you all three pages, the HHP, the subscriber page, and the FCP page. As I mentioned, please feel free to reach out. Here once again is my, sorry, is my information. You're welcome to contact me with any questions or comments or um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. So thank you very much and just please reach out with any questions. Have a good day.